Hare Krishna, we continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 10, The Opulence of the Absolute, text 36. Dyutam chalayatam asmi. Dyutam chalayatam asmi. Tejas tejas vinam aham. Tejas tejas vinam aham. Jayosmi vya vasayosmi. Satvam Satva Vatam Aham Satvam Satva Vatam Aham Dutam Gambling Dutam Gambling Chalayatam of all cheats Chalayatam of all cheats Asmi I am Asmi I am Teja the Splendor. Teja the Splendor. Teja Swinam of everything splendid. Teja Swinam of everything splendid. Aham, I am. Aham, I am. Jaya, victory. Jaya, victory. Asmi, I am. Asmi, I am. Vyavasaya, enterprise or adventure. Vyavasaya, enterprise or adventure. Adventure. Asmi, I am. Asmi, I am. Satvam, the strength. Satvam, the strength. Satvavatam, of the strong. That's the of the strong. Aham, I am. Aham, I am. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, S.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. I'm also the gambling of cheats and of the splendid. I'm the splendor. I'm victory. I'm adventure. And I'm the strength of the strong. There are many kinds of cheaters all over the universe. Of all cheating processes, <coughs> sorry, gambling stands supreme and therefore represents Krishna. Cheaters. This world is a world of cheater, cheaters and cheating. And of all the cheating, gambling is the gambling is also cheating. And gambling represents Krishna. As the Supreme Krishna can be more deceitful than any mere man. If Krishna chooses to deceive a person, no one can surpass him in his deceit. His greatness is not simply one-sided, it is all-sided. You know, if we try to cheat Krishna, we will get cheated. Krishna is a bigger cheater than us. We may think, oh, no, 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 but he's God. How can he cheat? But he is unlimited. Why? He's God. So he can do anything and everything we can do in unlimited manner. We are able to do something. Why? Because it exists in him. We, how can we say, oh, I can cheat, but God cannot cheat. Then we are trying to say that I'm greater than God. I have something I can do, but God can't do that. No. No. God is complete. So even cheating, Krishna is the greatest cheater. No one can cheat as great as Krishna. People, we, we don't want to believe in Krishna. What does Krishna do? He comes in the form of death. That's how he cheats us. He comes as the form of death. He's in the form of time, in the form of death. We may say, oh, I don't surrender to Krishna. But at death, we have to surrender. We have to surrender to Krishna. Among the victorious, he's victory. So wherever we see victory, that is Krishna. He's the splendor of the splendid. We see so many splendorous things. That is Krishna. Among the enterprising and industrious, he's the most enterprising and most industrious. Among adventurers, he's the most adventurous. And among the strong, he's the strongest. So these are some of the qualities. It's not that oh, only we can be enterprising, we can be industrious. 
But why do we have those qualities? It's because Krishna has those qualities in full. In full. We may be strong. We may build our muscles. We may, you know, do, do training, bodybuilding. But Krishna, even without building his muscles, he lifted the Govardhan hill on the left, in his left arm, with his left hand. And the left in the smallest finger of his left hand for seven days and seven nights. So he's the strongest. We may think we are adventurous, but Krishna is the most adventurous. When Krishna was present on earth, no one could surpass him in strength. Even in his childhood, he lifted Govardhan Hill. No one can surpass him in cheating. No one can surpass him in splendor. No one can surpass him in victory. No one can surpass him in enterprise and no one can surpass him in strength. So this is Krishna's position. He himself is telling us about it. We simply have to accept it. We may fight it. We may not believe in it. But our belief in, in no way influences the truth. Our belief in no way affects the fact I may not believe the law of gravity exists, but just because I don't believe it doesn't mean law of gravity won't act on me. So I may not believe that Krishna is the strongest, but my belief has nothing to got to do with the fact. The fact is that yes, Krishna is the strongest. Yes, there is no one more uh, splendorous than Krishna. Hmm. So reading on, Rishi Nam Vasudeva Sme. Rishi Nam Vasudeva Sme. Pandavanam Dhananjaya. Pandavanam Dhananjaya. Muninam Api Aham Vyasa. Ravinam Ushana Kavihi. Rishni Nam of the descendants of Rishni. Rishni Nam of the descendants of Rishni. Vasudeva Krishna in Dwarka. Vasudeva Krishna in Dwarka. Asmi, I am. Asmi. Pandavanam of the Pandavas. Dhanam Jaya Arjuna. Muninam of the sages. Api also. Api. Aham, I am. Aham. Vyasa, Vyasa, the compiler of all Vedic literature. Vyasa, the compiler of all Vedic literature. Kavina, of all great thinkers. Kavina, of all great thinkers. Ushana, Ushana. Ushana, Ushana. Kavi, the thinker. Kavi. Thinker. Of the descendants of Rishni, I am Vasudev. And of the Pandavas, I am Arjuna. Of the sages, I am Vyasa. And among great thinkers, I am Oshana. Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Baladev is Krishna's immediate expansion. So, the, the, the original form of God, that's Krishna, original personality of God. Sham Sundar Krishna, holding a flute in two hands in Golok Rindavan. His first expansion is Balaramji, Lord Balaram. It's his first, first expansion. Both Lord Krishna and Baladev appear as sons of Vasudev. So both of them may be called Vasudev. So when 
Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudev, he's called Vasudev. And there's no difference between Krishna and Balaram. The difference is only in color. One is blackish, one is white. They are both God. But the mood of Balaramji is that he is, wants to serve Krishna and the mood of Krishna is of enjoying. From another point of view, because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan, all the forms of Krishna that appear elsewhere are his expansions. Vasudev is Krishna's immediate expansion. So Vasudev is not different from Krishna. So, you know, there's so many forms of Krishna. Vasudev, Lord Nishingadev, Lord Vishnu, Narayan, Lord Ramachandra. These are all expansions of Krishna. So they are non-different than Krishna. They are not different personalities. It's the same personality but just different expansions. And the original personality is Krishna and Vrindavan. You know, it, it's like that. It's like we have one candle and we light different candles with that candle. But still there is one original candle. This is how we can understand. So Vasudev and Krishna, Lord Vishnu and Krishna, all the same is one person. It's the same person. So Vasudev is Krishna's image. Okay, it is to be understood that the Vasudev referred to in this verse of Bhag Bhagavad Gita is Baladev or Balaram because he's the original source of all incarnations and thus he's the sole source of Vasudev. So Krishna, first he expands as Balaram and then from Balaram come all the different expansions. From Balaram comes Narayan, then all the... The Chatur Vyuha, Anirud, Pradyumna, Vasudev, Sankarshan, the second Chatur Vyuha. All the expansions are coming from Balaramji. Vasudev is coming from Balaram. Paramatma is coming from Balaram. The Mahavishnu, Garbodakshai Vishnu, Shirodakshai Vishnu, all the expansions are coming from Balaram. And where is Balaram coming from? He's coming from Krishna. He's Krishna's first expansion. So here Prabhupada is pointing out that because he's mentioned as source of all incarnations, so Vasudev here in this verse is referring to Lord Balaram because all the expansions are coming from Lord Balaram. The immediate expansions of the Lord are called Swamsha, personal expansions, and they're also expansions called Vibhinamsha, separated expansions. So all the Vishnu Tattva, they are called Swamsha, personal expansions. He's personally expanding, Vishnu Tattva. So he's called Swamsha. Now, Vibhinamsha, separated expansions. Who are those? Those are us, we, the living entities. We are part and parcel of Krishna. You know, we are coming from Krishna. We are also Krishna's expansion, but we are separated. Vibhinamsha. We do not have the same power as Krishna has. We have the same qualities as Krishna, but in minute quantities. Just as a, a drop of seawater will have salt in it. And so does the whole ocean of the whole ocean of uh, water has the salt. But the quantity is different. Quantity is completely different. But the quality is the same. That is the difference between Krishna and us. Are there any questions till now what we have read? Yes. If no, then we'll read on. Amongst the sons of Pandu, Arjuna is famous as Dhananjaya. Is the best of men and therefore represents Krishna. So Arjuna is called Dhananjaya because he, when, when uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj had to perform the Rajasuya Yagya, a great quantity of wealth was needed. And Arjuna helped Yudhishthira to get the wealth. He was fighting with all the kings and he collected huge amounts of wealth. 
So he's called Dhananjaya. Arjuna is famous. He's the best. That's why he is representing Krishna. Among the Munis or learned men conversant in Vedic knowledge, Vyas is the greatest because he explained Vedic knowledge in many different ways for the understanding of the common mass of people in this age of Kali. And Vyas is also known as an incarnation of Krishna. Therefore, Vyas also represents Krishna. So Srila Vyasadev, he's compiled the Vedas for, uh, for us. He's divided the Vedas into four. Earlier, Vedas was only one big book. And he knew we are Kalyuk people. We won't be able to understand it. So he divided it. He wrote the supplements, the Puranas, the Upanishads. So much he's written. Ultimately, he wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam for us, for our benefit. And this Srila Vyasadev represents Krishna. Kavis are those who are capable of thinking thoroughly on any subject matter. Among the Kavis, Ushana, Shukracharya, was the spiritual master of the demons. He was an extremely intelligent and far-seeing politician. Thus, Shukracharya is another representative of the opulence of Krishna. So Krishna is just pointing out a few, few things by which we could remember him that represent him. But Krishna is unlimited. Here he's saying that Shukracharya represents him for his, because he's very intelligent. Shukracharya is the priest of the demons. Just as Brihaspati is the priest of the demigods, Shukracharya is the priest of the demons. Reading on Dando Damyatam Asmi. Dando Damyatam Asmi. Nitir Asmi Jigish Jigishatam. Nitir Asmi Jigishatam. Monam Chevasmi Guyanam. Monam Chevasmi Guyanam. Gyanam Gyana Vatam Aham. Gyanam Gyana Vatam Aham. Among all means of suppressing lawlessness, I am punishment. And of those who seek victory, I am morality. Of secret things, I am silence. And of the wise, I am the wisdom. There are many suppressing agents of which the most important are those that cut down miscreants. When miscreants are punished, the agency of chastisement represents Krishna. So Krishna is saying that he is the one, the, 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 the quality of of um, punishing the miscreants that represents Krishna. Hmm? Miscreants are, are the people who want to create problems, suffering for others. So Krishna is the one. He represents this, this quality of chastising the miscreants. Among those who are trying to be victorious, in some field of activity, the most victorious element is morality. So morality also uh, represents Krishna. Victor uh, and what is being said is that among those who are trying to be victorious in some field of activity, the most victorious element is morality. So where there is morality, there will be victory. And that is Krishna. Among the confidential activities of hearing, thinking, and meditating, silence is most important because by silence one can make progress very quickly. The wise man is he who can discriminate between matter. So when, when it's said silence here, silence doesn't mean just to keep quiet, but silence means on, speaking only about Krishna, hearing about Krishna. That is actually silence. Silence doesn't mean that, oh, I'm not going to hear and chant about the glories of the Lord. 
No, real silence means to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, to propagate the glories of the Lord. That is real silence because then we are not engaging in hearing and chanting mundane material things. And by that, we can make progress by hearing and chanting about the Lord. The wise man is he who can discriminate between matter and spirit, between God's superior and inferior natures. Such knowledge is Krishna himself. So Krishna is saying that the discriminating power of understanding what is matter, what is spirit, who is God? What is God's superior energy? What is God's inferior energy? That is, that knowledge is Krishna. That means the knowledge of self-realization. That is Krishna himself. Yakchapi sarva bhutanam Bijam tad aham arjuna. Bijam tad aham arjuna. Na tad asti vinayatsyan. Na tad asti Maya bhutam chara charam. Maya bhutam chara charam. Yet whatever. Yet whatever. Cha also. Cha also. also. Api maybe. Api maybe. Api maybe. Sarva Bhutanam of all creations. Sarva Bhutanam, Sarva Bhutanam of all creations. Bijam seed. Bijam seed. seed. That, that. That, that. Aham, I am. Aham, I am. Arjuna, O oh Arjuna. Arjuna, Arjuna, O oh Arjuna. Na, not. Na, no, no, not. That, that. That, that. that. Asti, there is. Vina without. Vina without. Yat which? Yat which? Syat exists. Syat exists. Maya me. Maya me. Bhutam created being. Being. Chara achara moving and non moving. Chara achara achara moving and non moving. Furthermore, O Arjuna, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being moving or non moving that can exist without me. Everything has a cause. And that cause or seed of manifestation is Krishna. Brahmaji says in Brahma Samhita, Ishvara Parma Krishna, Satchidananda Govinda, Anadi Radir uh, Govinda, Sarva Karana Karana. Ishvara Parma Krishna, Satchidananda Govinda. Anadi Radir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. Sarva Karana Karanam. Cause of all causes. Krishna is the cause of all causes. And it's being, Krishna is himself saying it here. All the great authorities say, Brahmaji is the greatest authority in this universe. Even he is saying it. Without Krishna's energy, nothing can exist. Therefore, he is called omnipotent. So Krishna is omnipotent. We say God is omnipotent. But who is that person who is omnipotent? That is Krishna. And what are his potencies? The material energy, the spiritual energy, the living entities. They all Krishna's potencies. Without his potency, neither the movable nor the immovable can exist. 
whatever existence is not founded on the energy of Krishna is called Maya, that which is not. So if we think that something exists that is separate from Krishna, that does not belong to Krishna, that is beyond Krishna's jurisdiction, that is Maya. There is nothing, there is no one that does not belong to Krishna. There is nothing or no one that uh, is not coming from Krishna. Why do we exist? We exist because Krishna exists. We are part and parcel of Krishna. Why does the material world exist? Because Krishna exists. Why does the material energy exist? Because Krishna exists. Why does the spiritual world exist? Because Krishna exists. Why does the spiritual energy exist? Because Krishna exists. So Krishna is that generating seed. He is the one. Because he exists, everything else that we are seeing exists. What we can see, what we cannot see. Everything that exists is because of Krishna. And here it's clearly said, whatever existence is not founded on the energy of Krishna is called Maya, that which is not. If we think that anything the, or something that does not belong to Krishna, that thinking is Maya, that which is not. Is that okay? So Krishna himself says it, all the great authorities say it, that everything exists because he exists. He's the origin of everything, everyone. He's the omnipotent. So if there are no questions or comments, we'll stop here for today. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vinda ki jai, Hare Krishna.